with bearindependent.com. Today's bear brief will be a live stream rather than a pre-record because I'm in a location on property that somehow, by the miracle of Yah, has Wi-Fi. And so we're going to do it. We're going to do it live. Today, we're talking about 5G airlines, Russia and Belarus, and some supply chain considerations. Appreciate y'all being here. Shout out to all the patrons for supporting the show. Good morning, Devin. Got the hoodie. Appreciate you, brother. Shalom, Hans. Bear Independent Brief, 19 January 22. Previously, the widespread cancellations uh, were overwhelmingly due to the coronavirus-related complications, cancellations of airline flights. Today, a new wrench in operations is rearing its ugly head. 5G. <gasps> By the way, intel at bearindependent.com is how you email us your intel, not your information, not your watch this link, not your did you see this blog post, your intel, intel at bearindependent.com. That goes to the Dance Monkeys, whom are a team of badasses and whom we offer our appreciation and mutual respect for helping us put this brief together every day. Intel at bearindependent.com. The technology is being rolled out around the world with great haste as telecommunications companies sink enormous amounts of money into the competition to offer the fastest internet, the best connectivity, and the most bandwidth. By the way, I was uh, in Dallas a short while ago doing our essential responder class with refuge training, uh, which is like uh, combat lifesaver class, uh, TAC med, hands-on, force-on-force, blue guns. It's the best. It's awesome. Uh, it's one of those things in like, literally our instructors are like, I can't believe we get paid to do this. <laughs> and all the students are like, this was badass. Can we do it again? It's awesome. What's up, Liberty Micro Farm? And there was 5G connectivity there. And it sucked. It was bad. It was really slow. Now, I realize that has to do with the number of people who are connected to the network. But, uh, geez louise, homie, I was unimpressed. Verizon and AT&T are set to implement new C-band 5G, the Charlie Band. Have you heard about the Charlie Band? Good morning, Sanctified Supply Co. The new Charlie Band 5G service this Wednesday, but this Charlie Band 5G gives off signals that airlines are warning will interfere with the signals used by radar altimeters. Oh, no big deal. What's up, Arkansas? Living shalom, brother. That's necessary safety equipment pilots need for taking off and for landed landing with restricted visibility. No big deal. No big deal. We'll just fly the Budweiser can with wings and engines on it without knowing how high in the air we are, right? Jelly of your woodpile. Well, me and my brother uh, Dudley split this. Mostly J.A. Dudley split it. Um, and we use this particular wood where we are at our gazebo for fellowshipping because this is all uh, loblolly pine. <laughs> Dragon Keeper 1990 says we don't need planes. I don't use planes anymore because I don't particularly feel like being imprisoned for punching a TSA agent in the face. <sighs> United Airlines said in a statement that the 5G rollout could create a devastating impact on aviation, impacting up to one and a quarter million United passengers. That's only passenger travel, and that's only one airline. They said, quote, we won't compromise on safety, full stop. But governments in other countries have successfully designed policies to ensure the safe deployment of 5G technology, the Charlie Band. And we're simply asking the U.S. government to do the same. End quote. Air American Airlines COO, Chief Operating Officer, also known as KU, David Seymour, warned employees of major operational disruptions, adding, quote, until a long-term technical solution is developed and implemented, and as long as 5G is deployed, we anticipate will experience delays, diversions, and cancellations that are well beyond our control. Supply Jane. What's up, Tony John? Good morning, brother. Supply Jane. Is pine good for barbecue? So I get that question a lot. In fact, somebody asked it on Patreon yesterday, last night. I'm not entirely sure. Um, I was up way later than I normally am. And so when people are like, Bear, you look tired. I am. Why? Hashtag homestead. There were things that needed to get done. And I 
I was awake until today. That's not a thing that I often do anymore. Back in the days when I was in heavy metal bands and we partied all the time. Good morning, Huntsman. I appreciate you, brother. Um, yeah, it was nothing to party till the sun came up. Now, party for me looks like uh, a glass of whiskey on my porch and then get in bed by 9 p.m. because I'm, I'm old. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Bear, you look tired. I am. Better have that coffee at the ready, Bear. I have that coffee at the ready, sir. It's right here. Bear, no time for hibernate. Copy that. Heck yeah. People all the time are like, dude, how do I get one of those mugs? It's a Stanley mug that has a bear sticker on it. And you get the bear stickers from bearindependent.com. That's how you get one of these. That's no muy special. Officials were contacted for help. CEOs of five major airlines, as well as UPS and FedEx, all signed a letter to U.S. transportation and economic officials saying, quote, Unless our major hubs are cleared to fly, the vast majority of traveling and shipping public will essentially be grounded. Oh, okay. No big deal, right? Ishmael Yoder, get back in the barn and milk those cows, son. How many times I got to tell you? Get off your iPhone and get back to work. Plus, there's a whole bunch of riven oak furniture that needs to be made by hand, your hands. And if I see you using a power tool again, it's over. Got it? Got it. So... FedEx, UPS, several others are saying, hey, because of this 5G interfering with the altimeters in our airplanes, we can't fly them. So, you know, it's no big deal. It's just uh, international supply chain and logistics was already, was already not doing that great. Now they're saying it's altimeters. I guarantee you certain mindsets that would prevail on this subject, for example, my friend Christian at the Ice Age Farmer would say something to the effect of what this is, is predictive programming. Um, Yoder's getting chained in the barn. It's predictive programming. It's one more excuse, one more tool in the toolkit for uh, the messaging that's going to come about that the availability of the things that we need and the things that we love, the things that we want, is going to continue to be diminished. And now we have one more thing to blame this on. The planes can't fly because of the 5G. <gasps> uh, planes are going back to mechanical altimeters. You know, hey, that would be an easy fix, Christian Hilt, wouldn't it? Ah. Immediate intervention is needed to avoid significant operational disruption to air passengers, shippers, supply chain, and delivery of needed medical supplies. This is a quote. To be blunt, the nation's commerce will grind to a halt. Sweet. That's what we need. Plus, that's definitely going to assist in the economic recovery of this nation, right? For sure. For sure. NBC News reported, quote, as the 5G service goes live Wednesday, the FAA, Federal Aviation Administration, has said that it will take the precaution of prohibiting pilots from using altimeters during landing at more than 80 airports near 5G sites. Look out for them crashes, y'all. Major airports in Dallas, New York, Chicago, and Seattle are among those expected to be affected. <laughs> Roger that. The FAA cleared about 45% of the commercial fleet to land in low visibility at these airports. Presumably, the other flights, the other 55%, or more than a half for those that aren't good at, uh, you know, numbers, will have to be delayed or canceled. No big deal, right? This Wednesday, uh, and maybe this is just one more, like, and I don't understand the strategic value of this. Doesn't mean that there isn't. I just don't see it. But people have been saying during this whole uh, global thing that's been going on for the last couple of years, thank you, Nevada Smith. Um, yeah, well, they're trying to bankrupt the airlines. Why? Why? Maybe to extract capital, maybe to get government funding, maybe to upgrade the fleet that really needs to be uh, mothballed. I don't know. But I, I don't get it. Doesn't mean that there's not an angle there. I just don't get it. This Wednesday rollout comes after a two-week delay, CNN reported. Quote, a source familiar with the discussions tells CNN that right now talks are centering on establishing a buffer at key airports, allowing roughly 90% of 5G towers to be deployed. 
If agreed to, officials predict the cancellations could be avoided and impacts to the traveling public, while not eliminated, would be reduced. In other words, they're not going to fire up the 5G towers around the airport because that could make the planes crash. I don't know what kind of mega minds had to come up with this policy, but it sounds pretty good to me, right? Uh, they want everyone to use trains. Hmm, sound familiar? Dan B. Interesting observation. It appears that the uproar raised by major airlines has drawn enough attention that the telecom co companies have voluntarily decided not to activate the towers near key airports. My guess is that the telecom companies' lawyers and attorneys said, hmm, we really don't want to be responsible for when a 737 comes falling out of the sky and smashes into the tarmac and lights on fire because you put up one of your cutesy little 5G towers. Maybe we shouldn't do that. That's where my mind goes to. The sentiment from these companies is clear. They believe the airline's concerns are unfounded because 5G has been successfully rolled out in other countries. Verizon issued a statement saying, quote, the Federal Aviation Administration, or the FAA, and our nation's airlines have not been able to fully resolve navigating 5G around airports, despite it being safe and fully operational in more than 40 countries, end quote. AT&T was also clearly frustrated, saying that it had agreed to, quote, temporarily defer turning on a limited number of towers around certain airport runways as we continue to work with the aviation industry and the FAA to provide further information about our 5G deployment since they have not utilized the two years they've had to responsibly plan for this deployment, end quote. It's unclear how long the selected towers near certain airports will remain shut off. And if you're on Patreon, you have all the relevant links and the text of that brief. And if you're not, you don't. Now, from RT, ooh, the big news. Maybe we should have a sip of coffee before we get into the big news. Mmm, screaming hot. Come out of her, my people, says Stacy Lynn. I agree. I have, from Sanctified Supply Co., the uh, Unafraid shirt on and I also have it on good authority Are you listening I also have it on good authority that there's a shirt coming good morning Frank Chupinka Frank the tank that guy's awesome hope you're doing well brother uh, I have it on good authority that there's a shirt coming that says the word ungovernable ungovernable on it and uh when we launch that design, or prior to launching that design, we're going to put up some of the proposed designs on Patreon and allow the patrons to vote for which one they would like to see produced. So uh, there's a thing. If you're on Patreon, be looking out for that. So, <sighs> yeah, the world's a little weird. What else is new? And that's important to understand as well. Adjust your OODA loop. You know, we keep talking about the new normal, right? Now, this is just normal now. Good morning, Robin Hastings. This is just normal now. This is just the way that it is. And the thing is, you actually get to decide what your normal looks like. Believe it or not, you have a say in what your normal looks like. My normal looks like drinking coffee in the morning and talking to the sideways iPhone because I decided years ago that's what it was going to be, right? Um, my normal looks like operating businesses and going on missions and hanging out with my family and, you know, homesteading, because that's what we decided it was going to look like. You actually get to decide. One of the greatest lies perpetrated on humanity is the idea that you don't have a say in this. You actually do. You actually get to decide what you're going to do. Now, actions have consequences, right? Uh, what does Pastor Joe say? Choose wisely. Well, there you go. Yeah, there you go. So, given everything that's going on out there in the world, um, maybe you should be making some moves while you still can. From RT, Russia could invade at any moment. Any moment. Good morning, Titanium Legs. Russia could invade at any moment, says Blinken. An offensive on Ukraine could come at any point, Washington's top diplomats warn, by Leila Guest. Russian soldiers, tanks, and military hardware could begin, could begin, asterisk, 
could begin pouring over the shared border with Ukraine with little or no warning. Washington's top diplomat has told American embassy staff in Kiev as part of a whistle-stop diplomatic tour of Europe. Uh, if Blinken doesn't blink, he is lying. <laughs> Michael Blanton, good morning. Um, so listen, we're going to read this article, but all indicators are things are spinning up in that region, more so than they have been spun up. And so um, we'll read the article, and then I'll posit a question that was asked actually in a poll on YouTube by City Prepping, I believe it was. If, when Russia invades Ukraine, how much is that going to affect your life? If the uh, answer is a whole lot, you're doing your life wrong because we just talked about uh, we just talked about the new normal and your life gets to look like what you want it to look like. And if Russia invading the Ukraine has um, major impacts on your life and your livelihood, I mean, aside from potentially you know warheads on foreheads, then you're doing it wrong in my opinion. You're just playing. We've talked about that before at this channel. If you're just playing, okay, all right, that's fine. You do you. I'm not. This And this is not the preparedness channel for people that are just playing, that are just dabbling. And let's clear, uh, make a clear delineation here between people who are brand new to this, but serious, and people who are brand new and or have been in this for a long time, but are basically just engaging in fear porn, uh, doom mongering, um, you know, it's, this is a source of entertainment to them. What's up, Double Tap and Hillbilly? As a matter of fact, Double Tap and Hillbilly is where this mug came from. Bless you, brother. So, how much is Russia invading Ukraine going to affect your life? If the answer is a whole lot, you probably, while you still can, need to be making some moves. Speaking to officials in the Ukrainian capital on Wednesday, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken said, quote, As you all know very, very well, we have been engaged in the past couple of months in an intense focus on Ukraine because of the significant buildup we've seen of Russian forces we've seen near the Ukrainian border, end quote. He claimed that Russia is amassing troops and weapons systems near the frontier, quote, with no provocation, no reason, end quote. And as we know, diplomatic efforts are basically stymied at this point. Russia and the Estados Unidos got together and had a little convo, and there were no concessions on either side. There were no agreements. There was no nothing. It was just like, no, no, that didn't work. Now what? Mm, guns, tanks, bombs, guns, planes, you know, whatever. Whatever we got. The planes that can't fly because of the 5G. Quote, we know that there are plans in place to increase that force even more on very short notice. And that gives Russian President Vladimir Putin the capacity, also on very short notice, to take further aggressive action against Ukraine, Blinken claimed. I, I believe he's correct in that. We've been watching the Ukrainian situation intently for about the last year and really intently for the last few months. They're, they're going to do something. The diplomat, Blinken, also reiterated... His support to staff working in the, in the Eastern European nation. Quote, I can imagine that this period is especially difficult, stressful, and maybe even scary, he said. We have your backs as you've had our backs for so many years. Just words from a politician. Yep. We as a department in Washington are here for you and are very, very focused on the well-being, the safety, and the security of our community here, including your families, the officials stressed even though they told those in the embassy in Kiev, hey, you should probably go home. Blinken's remarks come amid concerns in recent months that Moscow is plotting to stage an invasion of its neighbor. Speaking at a briefing on Tuesday, White House Press Secretary Jen Psakalakalakalos said that the situation is now extremely dangerous and at a point where Washington believes that, quote, Russia could at any point launch an attack in Ukraine. We are aware of this. A report published earlier this week by the New York Times citing unnamed officials claimed that Moscow has started to evacuate its diplomats and their families from the embassy in Kiev and consulate in Lvov. In response, the Russian foreign ministry reported that, quote, the Russian embassy in Kiev is working normally, end quote, but did not comment on whether staff numbers were being cut. The Kremlin has repeatedly denied accusations that it is planning to attack, with its press secretary Dmitry Peskov slamming them as groundless and manifestations of hysteria. Yeah, it's interesting when 
two worlds of misinformation and smoke screens collide, right? The official also previously said that the movement of the country's armed forces on its own territory is an internal matter and of no concern to anyone else. Russian officials met with their American counterparts last week to discuss proposals for security guarantees they say would help reduce the risk of conflict, including barring Ukraine from joining NATO. Jen Stoltenberg, the U.S.-led bloc secretary general, has described the, the draft treaties put forward by Russia as unacceptable, saying that the decision on whether Ukraine can join NATO will be taken by Ukraine and 30 NATO allies alone. In other words, saying, hey, Russia, keep your nose out of the situation. Now, we've discussed many times previously the importance of Ukraine to Russia. Here, um, there are people within Ukraine that identify as Russian there are uh, Russian partisans, there are Ukrainian partisans, there is currently U.S. Special Forces in Ukraine um, training resistance groups a la the French resistance in Ukraine. Uh, we, the Americans, are pulling our people, our uh, officials out of Ukraine. The Russians now reportedly are pulling their uh, diplomats and officials out of Ukraine. Russia is moving into Belarus. They've moved um, tanks and M MRLS, multiple rocket launcher systems. I forget what the Russian nomenclature is, but basically big rockets on trucks into there, as well as ground forces, mechanized divisions, um, into Belarus, which uh, also shares a border with Ukraine. And so now they've got them on two sides. So they're going to go, and when they go, everybody who thinks they're going to go thinks they're going to go to the Dnieper River, which I agree with. And Kiev is in the north of the country on the Dnieper River. And the Crimea, which is the area that uh, in 2012 or so that started this whole conflict between Russia and Ukraine, is to the south. The Dnieper River runs into the south onto the Crimean Peninsula, which dumps out into the Sea of Azov. And Russia has uh, naval ports there, and they don't want to lose those naval ports. They also have people that identify as Russian there. And in between Crimea and the Russian border, the western border of Russia, the eastern border of Ukraine, is the uh, Donetsk and Luhansk regions, which have massive amounts of industrial manufacturing, like you know steel mills and cement plants and uh, just massive amounts of... Uh, industrial manufacturing, as well as are the region's breadbasket. They produce a lot of food. And so Russia has been working in a concerted effort there to get enough um, public support for Russia coming into that area to make a move that they'll suffer lower uh, resistance when they do. Additionally, Ukraine... Uh, what is it? They have one mountain division. I believe they have 19 mechanized divisions, five or six armor divisions, tanks, essentially. Uh, they have a couple of, um, I think they have one airborne ranger regiment. They've got um, basically their, their equivalent of the special air service, special boat service. And, but they don't have a whole lot. And in that region... They have Ukraine broken up into four regions, essentially. The western region, the northern region, the southern region, the eastern region. And the eastern region is where you find the line of conflict between Ukraine and Russia. And in that region, of the 19 or so divisions that they have, they've only got like four of them there. And so some would say that the Ukrainians aren't actually expecting um, aren't actually expecting to go head to head with Russia. I disagree. I think they are. And that's why they, they don't believe that they can win. So they have not amassed all of those troops along the, their shared border with Russia, because if they did, it would be a bloodbath. And so if you look at where the currently, where the troops have been deployed in Ukraine, most of them are in the North where Kiev is at, and most of them are in the West, which is as far away from Russia as you can get and still be in Ukraine. And so that, to me, is an indicator, could be completely wrong, but that to me is an indicator that um, 
when Russia comes across that border, now from the north in Belarus and from the east in Russia proper, that they are going to go all the way to the Dnieper River, and they may take and hold that. And I, if I was them, I would, and control that whole eastern half of Ukraine. So now to the question that I posited earlier. How much is this going to affect your, what's up, Billy Hill? How much is this going to affect your daily life? Anybody? I mean, honestly, I'm interested in your comments down below. See, the uh, initial conflict shouldn't, if you're doing your life right, shouldn't affect you at all. It's the potentiality for that conflict to grow from regional Russia, Belarus, and Belarus is Russia 2.0, right? Um, versus Ukraine. And see, NATO has advisors. Um, NATO has, air quote, advisors in the region um, and training personnel. The U.S. has advisors and training personnel uh, that likely will be pulled back, will be pulled out the moment Russia actually comes hot and heavy across that line. The question then becomes, once Russia does that, how how involved are other people, other nation states going to become? See, Ukraine is not a NATO nation. They want to be. And NATO thinks they want them to be as well, but they're not a NATO nation. So there's no, um, we're not beholden. NATO is not beholden to defend them. And NATO is basically the United States. Uh, it's 80 plus percent the United States. The uh, United States has a treaty for, you know, ask the American Indian what that's worth, has a treaty with Ukraine. Uh, but we've recently told, uh, <laughs> we've announced publicly, our executive branch of the United States has announced publicly that we're not going to get decisively engaged in Ukraine. Best of luck. We hope it goes well for y'all, but we're not going to get decisively engaged with Ukraine. And so I think there's the, the, the most likely path is that there is, it does go hot in Ukraine, and that becomes essentially another proxy war, um, much like uh, Syria, or um, as we're seeing uh, in Taiwan currently, right? Or Afghanistan was essentially a proxy war. <sighs> Vietnam was a proxy war. Korea was a proxy war. And so as far as the end of the world as we know it, as long as it remains contained in that region as a proxy war, not great, but not going to kill us all. If the United States becomes decisively engaged in Ukraine, then it has the ability, the potentiality to go big and to go hot really fast, really bad. And I think that's what really has everybody concerned which gets you back to how are you living your life and where are you living your life? Because if you're right outside of a major military installation, that could be a problem. If you're right outside of major manufacturing or a major city, that could be a problem. Um, if you're not, the biggest problem you have is, you know, Domino's doesn't deliver to your house. And it's kind of annoying sometimes when you just want to eat a damn pizza. And I know all of our East Coasters right now are like, uh, that's not pizza. I know, there's no Italians here. It's a shame. There's, there's no Luigi's. I got no Mario's. I got no, nobody whose names end in vowels who are good at cooking food. It's not a thing in eastern Oklahoma. I wish that it was, but it's not. Uh, even then, they probably still wouldn't deliver. So uh, I'm around a bunch of idiots, which is scary enough. <laughs> well, Tanner House Gate, there you go. Um, so I think it would behoove all of us to do, I can send you a pizza, Frank, you're the best man. It would behoove all of us to do a little bit of soul searching and see if we are where we are supposed to be. And I know for many people, many people, when they think about the concept of come out of her, my people, re strategic relocation, Joel Skousen, uh, they have prayed, they have seek the father's face, sought the father's face, and the word that they've gotten is, you're where you're supposed to be. Stay here. I need you here. Okay. Uh, and well, I don't understand that because it's not the answer that I got, I can respect it if it's the answer you're supposed to get. But if you haven't done that soul searching, if you haven't asked those questions, you need to. Um, we just got Domino's last year. Damn it. Time to move again. 
<laughs> Good morning, Sarah. So I, I really think, given the direction that the world is heading in, we need to be asking the big questions of ourselves and of the people that we love. Hey, am I where I'm supposed to be? And if the answer to that is no, then go. The Father gave you two feet for a reason. Use it. Now, speaking of the Father and this one ridiculous eyebrow, let's go ahead and pray. Good morning, Father Yah. Father, uh, thank you for everybody within the sound of my voice, and thank you for another day here on this earth that we can humble ourselves before you and seek your face and ask your will for our lives. Father, to everybody who stayed on for the prayer for the first time, welcome. Thank you for moving in our lives, and I pray that you would move in our lives in such a way that it's completely undeniable, that it's not a coincidence or a happenstance or serendipity, Father, but that it's you, that it's undeniably your hand. And Father, I pray that you would do that so that you would build testimony in us and through us about how awesome and powerful you are. And Father, I ask that you would give us wisdom and discernment via your Ruach HaKodesh, your Holy Spirit, that we know what moves to make and that those moves are righteous and that you put us where you need us and that you equip and empower us to do what we're supposed to do for you wherever you might plant us. Father, as these days get stupider and scarier, I pray that you would just continue to remind us that we are to fear nothing but you. I pray that you'd build that faith in us that you would make us mighty sons and daughters of you. You would use us to accomplish your will, whatever that might be, and that you would be perfectly clear with us what that will is. <sighs> Father, I pray that you just continue to keep us covered. And I thank you for the covering of the blood of your son, without whom we'd all be screwed anyway. And so, Father, I ask that you'd continue to convict us to be good stewards of that covering, to do many mighty works in your name, to do our best to put a smile on your face and hear, well done, good and faithful servant at the end of an age. I pray that you'd shine your light on us and that you would allow that light to spill out into others, that we would be a living testimony, a living witness unto you and your power and your glory. I thank you for today. I thank you that we woke up on this side of the earth. And I pray that you would use this day for your glory, that it would be ordained to you, and that you would move us like so many pieces on the chessboard. Father, thank you for today. Thank you for this technology, and thank you for the opportunity to seek your face. I ask these things in Yeshua's name. Amen. Bless y'all. You guys know the drill. You know how to get a hold of us. If you don't, links are in the description. I appreciate y'all, Bear Nation. You boys and girls are awesome. Keep doing the things. I'll see you soon. <laughs>